What's going on, everyone? It's Ben from Why Joe from Zero here with your weekly dose of retro Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, this is going to be a new type of video for me, so normally I won't do this whole introduction thing in these weekly doses of retro Yu-Gi-Oh. But if you're new to the channel, attracted by the title, wanting to know what's going on in the retro Yu-Gi-Oh world, I will mention that there will be a couple caveats to this. On my channel, I generally cover a bunch of old retro formats going in order uh, based on how they historically happened. And so I've not covered all the retro formats out there. And so for my weekly dose of retro Yu-Gi-Oh that I'll be doing, I'm only going to be focusing on events happening in either the formats that I've covered or one of the big four formats, Goat, Edison, Tengu Plant, and Hat. Those seem to be the big four retro formats that everyone's excited about, so I figured that I should include them even if I hadn't actually reached them on the channel yet. So this will be limited in scope to those sorts of criteria. So, you know, if you are looking for things that happen later on in the game's history or for formats like, you know, I know Vegas, Fire Water, things like that have been somewhat popular as well. If you're looking for those sorts of things, I'm not going to be talking about that in these videos. That doesn't mean that events aren't happening. It just means that I won't be mentioning them here just yet. But definitely, if you are interested in that, look on different discords. There are tons of discords out there for them. And, you know, I'll be linking to discords like the Format Library and any other format discords that are holding events. And generally, you can find discord links to the other discords in those. So definitely look for those if you're interested in those. But with that sort of disclaimer out of the way, let's dive into your dose of weekly retro Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, there's a couple exciting events happening this week. On Friday, there will be a Moral Talk Monthly in the Hat Alliance Discord server. That is their monthly multi-day events held on Dueling Book. Uh, so head on over to the Hat Alliance Discord linked in the description of the video if you want to join in that one. Also, around Friday or Saturday, there will be an Imperial Format Tournament held on the Imperial Discord server, which I will also link in the description down below, Imperial Format, if you don't know what that is. It's a format based around February 2003 using the December 2002 ban list, or I guess limited list at that point in time, and a card pool going up to Pharaoh's Servant. And I will be getting into the results of the previous Imperial Format tournament later on in this video, so I'm not going to dive too deep into what the metagame looks like there, but rest assured if you are interested in that, we will be getting to that later in the video. In addition, this Saturday, there will be a Critter Format Tournament, a multi-day Swiss event held on the Format Library Discord server linked in the description down below. And if you don't know what Critter Format is, it's one of the best of the early Yu-Gi-Oh! formats. Very, very skill intensive, using a card pool going up to Metal Raiders and the July 2002 limit list. And games often are very, very grindy, back and forth control-based games as the Sangans and Witches lead to immense resource trains as everyone sort of has monsters, but those monsters aren't really too powerful, so the games aren't ending up out of nowhere. A lot of very skillful play, and it's one of the most skill-intensive early formats in the game's history. So definitely check that out if you're interested in control-based gameplay that also rewards great skill. Lastly, for the upcoming events this weekend, we've got on Sunday the Goat Grand Prix in Milan. So if you're in Italy or that area, definitely head on over there. It should be a lot of fun. All the Goat Grand Prix have been really, really cool to both watch and, from what I hear, to play in as well. So definitely check that out if you're interested in that. Moving on from upcoming tournaments, we've also got the results to discuss for some tournaments that actually wrapped up within the past week. Now, for these sorts of tournaments, I'm not going to be focusing on Goat, Edison, Tengu Plant, or Hat format tournaments, because there are other channels that can discuss those results more in detail than I ever could. I'm just going to focus on the format results that no one else is covering, things like Imperial format tournaments and Fiber format tournaments, which will be the two tournaments that I'll be talking about today. Let's start with the Imperial Format Tournament, which wrapped up last week. This was a 14-person event. Only 14 people joined. And you can see from the deck type representation here that there was a lot of tomato control that was brought. Now, as a note, take this chart with a grain of salt. This was compiled by Format Library here. And their algorithm to actually classify the decks this way has been known to misclassify some things. For instance, I played in this event. I played Relinquished. And it was marked as tomato control. It does play missed tomatoes in the deck but it would still be classified in my mind as relinquished. So uh, the algorithm is not perfect here, but I do want to show this chart to just show that the format is relatively uniform. There are some decks that people do bring, like relinquished, for instance. Uh, I think people can bring burn occasionally as well, empty jar, etc. But the general deck that people are playing is this sort of tomato control list. And you might be wondering what that sort of list looks like and why it's called tomato control. And both of the top two deck lists here in the finals actually brought tomato control. So let's look at those lists and show what the typical deck in this format looks like. So this is the second place tomato control list piloted by Aretos, a frequent duelist in these 
formats and a very, very, very good one at that. They often top or win these events a lot. And this is no exception. I mean, they're playing a very, very clean tomato control list. It's called tomato control because you're using this tomato to float into things like Sangan or which is the Black Forest to get your resource train going. It's rated as also playing a can soldier here, which you can float into as well, which can be very useful to win wars where you just crash with your tomatoes with your opponent's tomatoes. And having a 1400 body in the deck can potentially outclass whatever your opponent brings out last. But also this can be used just to end games. You know, you search it off Sangan or which when your opponent's in a low resource or no, not in a low resource, but a low life point situation. And then you finish off the game with that cannon soldier burn. So this sort of list is very, very good. It's playing triple mechanical chaser, which is the highest level four beater in the format that didn't have a downside to it, like Draguma or Goblin Attack Force. Uh, it's playing triple moth to get back powerful spells. It's playing morphing jar to draw deeper into the deck. Morphing jar and cyber jar aren't the most typical inclusions in this style of deck, but I do like the experimentation with these flip monsters as they are very powerful if they go off in the right circumstances. So, you know, it makes sense why these are in the deck. Meteor Bug is here to pop your opponent's stuff, which is very good. Although most decks do play more Meteor Bugs, uh, it kind of makes sense that this deck's only playing one. I mean, it is playing Cyber Jar, which can act as a Meteor Bug on steroids, potentially. So I think this makes sense to me. Uh, Banisher of the Light is also in the deck. This tech card has been rising in popularity recently in Imperial format. And you'll see the other winning deck list actually has this in the deck as well. Um, but, you know... I do know that Aratos was saying after the tournament wrapped up that this card oftentimes uh, was not as good as something like a Giant Soldier Stone would have been. So, you know, it is an interesting card for sure. Banishes your opponent's monsters, so that way they can't get off their Witches or Sangans, but it also is a double-edged sword because it can banish your own monsters as well. So you've got to be careful with this card, but it can be very powerful in the right circumstances. And of course, Jinzo is in here to round out the monster lineup. Very, very powerful boss monster in this format. Shuts off a lot of traps. But that being said, you know, the traps that this shuts off uh, aren't necessarily things that would really be that much of a danger to you. The main thing that is shutting off that is a danger to you is something like Mirror Force, potentially. Call the Haunted, I guess, as well, but oftentimes, if you bring out Jinzo, it's very telegraphed, so your opponent can activate Call beforehand. Uh, it also shuts off Imperial Order, which is very important. I mean, Imperial Order is the namesake of the format, and it is um, quite an unfortunate card in this format. I mean, this card is really, really good, to the point where Rage is actually playing a Death Tornado, likely to hit the Imperial Order. They're also playing Trap Hole, no Torrential Tribute out in this format yet, so this makes sense to deal with your opponent's beaters. Uh, double Knock in here as well. Again, not necessarily a typical choice for the main deck, but I do like it in the main because, you know, you really want to do shut off your opponents like Magician of Faith, their Manny Bugs, their Sangan, their Witches, etc. The downside of this is if you're in a losing spot and your opponent's getting aggressive, it's kind of loses its value, um, but it is very good if you are in an aggressive position and you're able to pull it off. Other than that, the deck is pretty standard here. Double Fisher because you're kind of starved for monster removal. Triple MST to deal with your opponent's back row. Change of Heart Snatch to take your opponent's stuff. Uh, Raigeki and Dark Hole. You know, you've got the whole Power 5 here. You might as well play them. Delingma Duo, Confi, Forceful for your hand rip package. Heavy Storm here to blow away the remaining macro. Monster Reborn to bring back your stuff. Pot Agreed to draw two more. The side deck is also somewhat interesting. Sort of a hodgepodge. I think the side deck in Imperial hasn't like fully developed uh, because I think that the top deck lists really need to solidify into like um, sort of optimal builds in order for a side deck to really prosper. And also I think that like in a format like this where you do have one deck that kind of centralizes the whole metagame and I'm actually going to say this format might even be tier zero uh, to that extent. Uh, you know, the side deck gets a bit weird because you're not really siding in things for the best deck, you're siding in things for other decks potentially. Uh, or you're potentially siding based on whether you're going first or second as well. So I'm not sure why every card in the side deck is here, but still it's a very interesting side deck. And if you want to pick up a deck in Imperial format to start out with, this is a pretty good one. Of course, you could also just go with the winning deck list here by Dump Truck here. A well-deserved win because they've been playing in a lot of these retro tournaments for quite some time, and I believe this is their first win. And they're also one of the biggest proponents behind Imperial Format. They're the one organizing all these tournaments and things like that. So definitely a deserved win on Dump Truck's part. And for the deck, it looks very clean. Uh, it's not experimenting as much with the jars as Aratos is. They're just playing two manier bugs here instead of the Morphing Jar and Cyber Jar. I think that does make sense because this is more like reliable than something like Cyber Jar, which can give your opponent a big advantage potentially if it goes badly for you. They're also playing the Premat here, which Aratos chose to not include in the main deck. Uh, Premat does die to things like MST, and it can be a bit awkward if it runs into an IO as well. Um, but Premat is very powerful if you're able to pull it off, and sometimes that is just what you need. You need a card that increases the power level that you're able to output and lets you get even more aggressive. Besides that, the deck lists are largely the same double trap hole instead of just one trap hole here, uh, just to really deal with things like the tomatoes, like the mechanical chaser, etc. So I think that's pretty good there. Uh, side deck is also, you know, again, not really uh, solidified, I think, around one thing or another. 
Uh, I will mention that there's another Banisher in the side deck as well here. Uh, third Trap Hole, some Time Seals, which are very interesting techs. True Nades, I think, along with Heavy. Um, I think those are very, very good for the burn matchup as well. A lot of interesting stuff in the side deck here. But again, you know, this is sort of the typical sort of deck list that you'll see in this format. You know, this is what tomato control looks like. Just using tomatoes to keep bodies on board, go into your resource engine with the Sangans and Witches, and just overwhelm your opponent with having just monsters that do things. But that's going to do it for the deck list breakdown. Now that I've talked about these lists and talked about the results of the event, let's actually make a tier list for Imperial and sort of rank what I think will do well in the upcoming tournaments. Okay, we got our Imperial format tier list here. Now, for the decks that I put in here, I just put the decks that have either been in tournaments or that I featured in my videos on Imperial format, which I've collected in a big playlist. So if you're interested in more Imperial content, check that out. Um, but I do think that this is going to go pretty quickly because I'm pretty sure that the format, based on results, is going to be tier zero, based on how I define these sorts of things. Now, what does tier zero mean in my particular tier list here? I'm ranking these tiers based on what I expect to happen at a tournament. So tier zero is if a deck is almost guaranteed to win the tournament and the top cut will likely be pretty much all that deck as well, right? It's a format where one deck is really dominant and despite what other decks can do against that deck, they can't really crack that much into the top tiers of competitive play. Tier one would be if it's not tier zero, uh, it's a deck that I think uh, would be likely to win an event um, and would definitely top an event. I'd be surprised if it didn't top an event, depending on the side of the top cut, of course. Tier two would be decks that I wouldn't be surprised to see top, but I would be surprised to see win. So they're very good decks. You know, a good duelist can bring them to the top cut of a major event, but I don't think that they'd necessarily be able to bring it to the winning position, even if they are very, very skilled at the deck. Rogue decks are decks that I would be surprised to see top at all. Like, you know, they're decks that can potentially win games here and there, but not consistently enough to, you know, actually see tournament success. And trash decks are decks that I don't even think could win a match consistently. Uh, there's decks that I think are generally struggling to win one game in a match at all. So in, in Imperial format, based on the previous results, I do think that this is a tier zero format around tomato control. Yes, the chart that I showed at the beginning is flawed because there are decks that were feloniously counted as tomato control, which uh, should not be counted there. But uh, I do still think that tomato control is such a good deck that it does belong in tier zero. And maybe future tournament results will change that because there are some other decks that I think that like, you know, have been cracking into top cuts here and there and could potentially win in the future. But right now we're at a point where tomato control is really the thing worth playing if you want to actually win an event. And that makes me sad because I'm someone who's really grinded, uh, relinquished a lot and was of the opinion potentially a while back that this could be a tier one deck in the format. But uh, playing it in all these tournaments and just realizing the deck's flaws, really coming to grips with um, the sort of lack of consistency, making the deck just really bad in top deck situations and just making it so that I don't think this could win a major event. Uh, even with these smaller events that we've been having, I don't think that Relinquish could really top, or not top, it's top before, but I don't think it could win an event. Uh, just because over the course of the amount of games that you have to play, uh, you will run into the deck's main flaws, which is that sometimes uh, it is inconsistent, right? The deck tries to mitigate this by having its searchers like um, Senju and also Sonic Bird, but, you know, those can only do so much. Some games you'll just draw Relinquished and Black Illusion Rituals right away, and that may seem good, but it's actually really bad because then it shuts off your Senju, shuts off your Sonic Bird later on in the game, and also prevents you from getting that deck thinning in. Uh, so I will just put this in tier two. I think Relinquished is a still very fun deck to play, and I think you can top with it potentially. It's just, I don't think that it's going to win a tournament anytime soon, but maybe with more experimentation, maybe with more optimization in the deck build, that will change in the future. Right now, this is just where I see it right now. Next up, we got Burn. I think there's also a tier two deck. Uh, again, this is a deck that I think can be pretty good because it is annoying to play against and it does hose certain decks if you just draw very well with it. Um, but I think it suffers from similar flaws to Relinquished where in a top deck situation, it's pretty bad. If your opponent is able to crack your board, then you're in a pretty bad spot, I think. So I am just going to put this in tier two. But, you know, uh, also Imperial Order, really bad for Burn. Uh, really bad for Relinquished as well because it shuts off the ritual spell but even worse for Burn, in my opinion. So, yeah, I think it's just Tier 2. And, um, yeah, I mean, maybe in the future, people can change the build, maybe play more Dust Tornadoes or things like that. But I just think right now, it's it's just below Relinquished in Tier 2. Um, maybe with more experimentation, though, it can rise in the future. Next up, we got Exodia. Exodia, it's either Trash or Rogue. I'm going to put in Trash. I would be very surprised if Exodia 
uh, topped in the future. Yes, it's a backup soldier now, but like once the head's gone, the head's gone, and you just lose the game on the spot. And over the course of a tournament, I don't think that you know you'll be able to consistently avoid that situation enough to actually you know top an event. So I think that Exodia is trash here. Maybe the top of trash here, bottom of rogue, somewhere in there. But I do think that Exodia is trash. Next up, we got beat down decks that are just playing things like Goblin Attack Force or Jiragumas or something like that to get even more aggressive. I think this is rogue. Deck already played Jinzo, which can outclass things like Goblin Attack Force. Yes, Goblin Attack Force is a just normal summon without a tribute, but it does switch to defense, and then it's very vulnerable to things like Sangin, Tomato, etc., which you are likely going to be attacking into. So I think that this deck is rogue. Honestly, it's probably fallen out of the med game completely by now, so it maybe even shouldn't be on this list, but I made a video on it, so I figured I'd include it here. Hat Control, really, really cool deck. I think it is top of Rogue here. Uh, it's basically a deck using magical hats to get traps and spells out of your deck into the graveyard, so then you can Magician of Faith or Mask of Darkness it back. Very, very cool concept. Very, very cool strategy. Um, but I do think it does suffer from some big flaws. If you don't see your moths or your Mask of Darknesses, then uh, the hats are really bad. Also, Knock is really bad for the deck. You can play things like Acid Trap Hole to play around that. But at the end of the day, uh, that's turning Knock into basically a two-for-one trade. Um... So, you know, it's not really even the best if you do do that. So I think that the deck is top of Rogue. I think it's very, very cool. Could potentially rise to tier two in the future as more people play it and more people get used to the deck uh, and figure out how to optimize it even further. But I think for now it is top of Rogue. Uh, next up, we've got Empty Jar decks. I think this is firmly in Rogue. Uh, I think it's actually below Hass Control uh, because Empty Jar decks, they just don't have the combo potential that they will get later. They don't have Book of Moon. They don't have Book of Tayu. And it makes the decks very slow. Uh, and Mill's just not really the best in this format. So I'm going to put it in Rogue. Maybe it could rise in the future again with more optimization, more experimentation. But I think right now it belongs there. And lastly, we got Hand Control. I think Hand Control's Tier 2. It's basically playing like Tomato Control, but with some cards that are slightly worse, in my opinion. Uh, yes, it can rip cards out of the hand. And if you are able to pull off things like Robin Goblin or White Magic Cloud Effects or things like that, it can be very good. But I think that it just is not quite as consistent as Tomato Control. And that's the thing. Tomato Control is super consistent. Gives you a lot of options to do every turn. A lot of these other decks are a lot less consistent. Or, you know, if they do have options, uh, there's really only one good option of those. And you could argue that every Tomato Control hand also only has one good option. But, like, of the options that Tomato Control has, the ones that are not the best option in your hand are still pretty good. So... I think that Tomato Control is more forgiving. I think it's more consistent, and I think it's just very, very good. So I would say that this is a Tier 0 format. That's what I'm going to lock in right now. Again, this tier list is based on the current sort of state of the metagame. This could change in the future. I'm not saying that it will always be a Tier 0 format, but I think based on the past tournament results, based on my own experience with decks like Relinquish trying to get them into Tier 1, uh, I just think that Tomato Control is really the thing worth playing if you actually want to win an event here. For our next event that I want to discuss here, we've got Fiber Format, and the Fiber Format Monthly 7 actually wrapped up on the Fiber Jar Discord server, which I will also link in the Discord down below if you want to join that and join in on the next tournament here. Fiber Format is the format based around July 2003, with a card pool going up to Legacy of Darkness and using the July 2003 limit list. It's a really, really fun format. I like it a lot. I played in all these monthlies, and I plan on playing in more monthlies in the future, and I just think it's a really fun time, and it's a bit more diverse than Imperial format is, as you can see from this chart. Of course, some things probably got wrapped up into tomato control that were not intended to be tomato control, but that's just how this chart sort of works. But there are more decks in this format. You know, Recruiter Control is a deck that you can play like Recruiter Swap, some people call it, where you play more than one set of recruiters and you play things like Creature Swap or things like that. Get Gear Freed as well in the format. You get Hand Control as well using like Yadagarasu, Time Seal, things like that. Uh, so there are a variety of decks that you can play, or at least more than you can play in Imperial, I'd say, at a competitive level. But this was an 18 person event. We had 14 people on tomato controls listed by the algorithm here. Two people on recruiter control, one person on gear freed, and one person on hand control. Let's dive into this hopping deck list and see exactly what some of those look like. Now, since there were 18 people in this tournament, we actually get three topping deck lists to look at instead of two. So let's dive into Lalo 8888s first, and uh, this is Tomato Control. Uh, as you can see, the deck is a bit different from how it is in Imperial format, playing some of the new power cards like Graceful Charity that were introduced, uh, Fiber Jar as well, Exiled Force here too. So... Very, very cool list here. Uh, it's got triple Jars of Greed to draw deeper in the deck, triple MST as well to deal with things like Imperial Order and uh, Mirror Force, TT, Trap Hole, etc. Uh, a lot of cool stuff in this list. Uh, you've got the double Bazoo, double Gemini Elf, one Kaiku here. That is a ratio that I've seen 
like decently common in this format. You want to play some ratio of these three beaters as they're very, very good because they sort of check each other. Gemini Elf gets over Kaiku, which gets over Bazoo, which gets over Gemini Elf. So you want to be able to search them out off of which, but people vary on like how many that you actually want to play. But I think this is a pretty good ratio here. You got Exiled Force and Cyber Jar. Cyber Jar, definitely not a typical choice in this format, but I don't hate it. I will say with how few monsters Lalo is playing here, that might be a bit awkward sometimes. But again, it's one of those things where you need to be able to play it at the correct moment. And um, you got to get a little bit lucky. But if you are playing your cards right, then hopefully it won't be as bad for you as it might be in other circumstances. Uh, Exile Force here to deal with your opponent's monsters. Lily here to get in for a ton of damage. You got Sang in, in which to search out your deck. You got Sinister Serpent to provide discard fodder and things like that. Change of heart here to take your opponent's stuff. Comfy. Uh, is there forceful? Yeah, forceful is there, but no duo in the deck. Uh, I actually approve of no duo here. I think duo is kind of awkward in this format, and that may seem crazy because it is a plus one. But I think that with fiber drag going around, like duoing gets a lot less good, uh, and also serpents in the format now. So it's I don't know. It, it's kind of an awkward card. Um, I, I do approve of not maining it. I didn't main it in the events that I won as well. And Law got third not maining it, so maybe that's something there uh, to you know, consider in the future for other people here. But, you know, besides that, pretty standard deck list here. Uh, knock here to take away your opponent's set monsters. Painful choice to set up your graveyard. Pot, Regeki, Snatch Seal, Forceful. Uh, for the traps, call Imperial Order, Mirror Force. Time Seal here, very interesting card, but this has been catching on more. Uh, it is sort of like a cycle card with Jar. It's not quite cycling because you're not drawing into something. But if you think about what these cards each give you, Jar of Greed gives you a card from your deck. Time Seal deprives your opponent of a card from their deck. So they're accomplishing a similar purpose here. And they're also filling up your graveyard for things like Bazoo to banish there. Because Bazoo in this format can banish anything from Grave, not just monsters. Uh, it also lingers after a Fiber Jar activation, which is also another very nice use of this card. For the side deck, you know, a bit of a hodgepodge here. Creature Swap, um, not really sure what your Creature Swapping. I guess you got Scapegoat here to give your opponent with Creature Swap, but generally other decks play Creature Swap outside of this, like Recruiter Control decks. So you wouldn't bring this in against those. You wouldn't bring this in against Gear Freed. Not really sure what you'd bring this in for, but very interesting card here. Maybe if you bring in the Yada, you're bringing in the Creature Swaps to give your opponent that. You're also playing a Sure Priest, so maybe you give your opponent that as well. Uh, Jinzo here, shut off Traps. Double Dust Tornado, deal with back row. Uh, you've got a Cylinder uh, to deal some burn damage and also act as a battle trick in case you're up against a more aggressive deck. You've got TT and two more trap holes here as well. Uh, not a full side deck here, but, you know, honestly, do you need 15 cards in the side deck? I mean, you should have them if you want to play in these events, but, I mean, it clearly did not hamper Lalo too much here. Diving into the second place list, we've got GeoMyFS with a list that's classified as Recruiter Control. I don't quite know why it's Recruiter Control instead of Tomato Control here. The only recruiters they're playing are the Tomatoes. They're not even playing Rats in the side deck. So I don't necessarily know why it's classified that way. Maybe the Triple Torrents Tribute changed things, but I don't know. Either way, I think this deck looks really, really good. It's playing Yada in the main, which not every deck does, which is an interesting inclusion, but I do think it worked out for them. I mean, Yada is a very powerful card if you are able to pull off the lock. It's just sometimes it's inconsistent enough to cost you the game. If you draw it in a top deck situation and you can't set it up, then it's really bad. But, you know, having it in there to search off of a Sangin or which can be good. You just lock your opponent out of the game. Um, other than that, I mean, not much different from Lala's list here. Um, I think it just looks very good. You know, very, very clean list. Uh, side deck also looks pretty clean here as well. No time seal in the main, I will mention. Uh, so that's something that Lala was doing that GeoMyFest did not. And we'll have to see if the winning deck list also did that or if they didn't. And yes, indeed, PJ Darkness, the winner of the event, did play Time Seal in their deck list. So maybe this is a sign that more people should play it, especially since PJ actually played only two Jar of Greed instead of a third Jar of Greed here. A lot of people only play Time Seal after putting in the third Jar of Greed, but PJ was like, no, I think Time Seal actually is worth playing here in that third slot. So very interesting stuff there. Uh, honestly, a lot of interesting text in PJ's list. They're playing a Sure Priest in the main to deal with Recruiter Control decks because, you know, this eats through all your opponent's giant rats or tomatoes or things like that. Uh, as someone who plays Recruiter Swap a lot, I will say that Azure Priest is not as scary, I think, as a lot of people uh, make it out to be against the deck, because honestly, you're fine with the deck thinning most of the time. Um, but I will say it does keep a card off your side of the field, so Creature Swap is dead more often, so that is a nice thing about it. Also, just having a 1700 beater that can hit in every turn that your opponent can't use a lot of the typical removal spells on is very nice as well. Offering the Doom is also in the deck as a very interesting tech card. This can be chained to Io just to sort of uh, get in that bit of uh, removal 
um, before your opponent shuts off your other stuff. So that's a kind of nice feature. But the costing a draw thing can come up and actually be pretty bad for you. So it is a risky card to play, but it clearly paid off for PJ here. And, you know, a very, very neat tech that people have been experimenting with, I think, since like Android format. But here, you know, it actually finally makes it into a winning deck list. So maybe more people will be looking at this card in the future. Also, for their beater ratios, they've got triple Gemini Elf, only one Bazoo and one Kaiku. Uh, but that is also a pretty good ratio because the Gemini Elves are just bodies that hit in, right? They don't really need extra conditions to actually go off. They don't need a full graveyard like Bazoo does. Uh, they don't need a Bazoo on the opponent's side of the field like Kaiku does. Uh, and they do beat over your opponent's Kaiku. So that's pretty nice there. But... All things told, I think this deck list is really neat. It also has a wrap package here to side into a different set of recruiters along with an Amazonist Archer here, which is kind of neat to add additional burn damage and stuff like that. So I think this deck is really cool. Uh, I'm curious to see where the format goes from here, what decks look like in the future, because I feel like every format tournament we have for this format, uh, things change drastically, right? New techs arise in the topping list and new decks arise uh, to take the crown. While the top three decks here were all sort of tomato control, um, that's definitely not the standard. And actually, now that I think about it, PJ's deck wasn't even tomato control. It's not even on tomatoes. So this should probably not be classified as that. It's just sort of like, I don't know what you'd call this list. PJ, if you're in the comments, let us know what you'd call it, but definitely not tomato control. So that's kind of interesting. So again, a, a potential new contender for a deck list here, not standard at all, but very, very cool that cutting the tomatoes actually worked out for PJ here. So very interesting stuff there. And I'm curious to see what they potentially name their deck here. But either way, uh, now that we've covered the topping deck, let's, let's dive into a tier list for Fiber. It won't change much from my last tier list, but I just want to sort of update it based on the new results of this event. So this is what I had as my tier list the last time I actually made one. Uh, and I think that it has largely stayed the same just going through the decks. Uh, I have Bazoo here to represent just sort of like good stuff decks playing like a uh, pretty aggressive game plan. You're playing your beaters. You usually play Tomato Control, although uh, I guess in this case, Tomatoes were not necessary for PJ here. So uh, we're just leaving it as Bazoo there and no Tomatoes. Um, but I I'll classify PJ's deck in this category, even though it's not playing Tomatoes, because Tomatoes aren't necessary. It's more about just playing an aggressive deck, playing all the good cards in the format that don't really need any other cards to provide some synergy. Uh, next up, we got Recruiter Swap, represented by Creature Swap here. And... I, I don't know. I think people are siding more against Recruiter Swap here than they have been in the past. Like, Assure Priest is making it into the mains. And as I mentioned, I don't think Assure Priest is the scariest card against this deck. But it can come up and also it does make your Creature Swaps dead. Um, so I will put Creature Swap decks just sort of below uh, Gear Freed in terms of Tier 1. Not to say the Gear Freed, like, really had any results in this event. Um, but they did win the last Fire Format tournament, if I'm remembering correctly. Either the last one or the one before that. And so I think the deck is still very good. Uh, and I think it can win an event. It's just not many people were on at this event. So I will still put it in tier one. But, um, you know, if it continues to not show results in future events, I might bump down both these decks. I will still put them here for now, though, based on past results. Um, but I will order them in this way because, again, I think people are teching more for the recruiter swap matchup. Tier two. Hand control decks, I think, are still in hand control. You get drop off, you get like time seal and stuff. Time seal has been making its way into more decks, but it's been making its way into more just sort of like aggressive decks, right? It's not making its way into decks that are sort of special in their own way, uh, focusing around it. And I think that's a sign that just going more pure onto hand control is not the way to go. Generally, you want to just tech some hand control cards into a better deck uh, and just leave it at that. Fiends, uh, I'm still going to put this in your zoo. I think it can top events in the future. I wouldn't be surprised if it does. Um, it just, you know, we've not been having the biggest events. And so that means that the top cuts are pretty small overall. And, um, I can definitely see this topping in the future, but no one's really been playing it here. Rogue, you know, alt win cons like last turn and things like that, I think are still rogue. People have been trying to play them in these events and they've never really done well, never really topped. And so I'm still going to put them in the rogue category. Uh, dragons honestly, maybe could bump down to trash, but I, I feel like that's kicking a deck while it's down. And I do still think they can be rogue. I think they could potentially top an event in the future uh, if someone really like cooks with the deck, makes Rejuve um, a bit of a better card than it is in a lot of the builds right now. I have seen some pretty sick lists of this deck, uh, and I think that they can continue to be improved on. So I'm going to put it in rogue here, but below the all win con conditions for now. And then trash here, we got Gradius, we got Spirits. Pure Spirits are not really that good, uh, and neither is Gradius, although Gradius can get some OTKs. So that's how I'm going to leave it for now. So if you're thinking about joining the next Fiber Format Tournament, I would recommend just bringing either an aggressive good stuff pile, Gear Freed, or a Recruiter Swap deck. 
Or maybe just a deck playing a bunch of recruiters, but no creature swap, because creature swap can be a bit iffy when people are bringing in things like a Shura Priest and stuff like that. Uh, but that's going to do it for the tier list here. And that's actually going to do it for this week's weekly dose of Retro Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm planning on making these every week and continuing to discuss results from these tournaments, upcoming events, and things like that. This is the first time I'm really like expanding out this sort of tournament report video into you know, making it more of a general weekly dose of Retro Yu-Gi-Oh! So let me know any feedback that you have for this new format. If you're a new viewer to the channel, let me know what else you'd like to see in this sort of video as well. Or if anything was confusing to you, um, you know, did I spend too much in the nitty gritty about Imperial and Fiber? Would you like me to compress that in the future? Uh, you know, would you like me to explain more about what these formats are for new viewers as well? Let me know all that in the comments down below. Do all the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. And big shout outs as always to my patrons, Rincewin, Pork Trip Coon, Brendan Donker, GeoMyFest, Tyler Compton, and Dubstrike. It means a lot that you all support me this way. Could we make more videos like this in the future? If you want to be shout out in these videos and potentially get extra perks as well, join the Patreon links in my description down below. But that's going to do it for the video. If you want games in this format or any other format that I featured on the channel, then head on over to the YGF from Zero Discord server, along with all the other Discord servers that I linked in the description if you want more specific formats as well. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it as always. And until next time, I've been Ben from YGO from Zero, and I'm signing off.